It was really nice to see how he develops over those years, you know, and uh, I mean, there was a time, I think, uh, where Ave was struggling a little bit, a, bit, a little bit too much, because he, were, he wanted to achieve so much more, and at one point it was kind of a dead-end road, you know, and he put his head down, he thought, oh, what can I do? I mean, I'm not, um, I'm not developing in a, in, a, in, a, in a better way. I remember at this point, I mean, he didn't perform at all, you know. I mean, he, was, he came into the finish line, he was absolutely broken, he didn't understand anything more, you know, because he prepared for this one and he was so sure and so, um, so confident, you know, that he's gonna be at the end, he's gonna maybe win or just at least go for the podium. And uh, he didn't, I mean, I think he finished 15th, 20th or whatever. Uh, after the race, you know, we uh, met randomly on the, on the road because he went for a ride, I went for a ride in my place, you know, and we met on the, on the street and I said, hey, Abe, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, I'm just riding, just want to kind of clear my head and stuff from the race yesterday. And then it was kind of a, you know, like a, uh, one of those moments where you think, can't be, you know, that you meet somewhere and you didn't talk and suddenly you meet and, you know, we had that chat together and um, he was really down and sad. And um, I just tried to, you know, like encourage him in a way because I said, Junge, this is just one race, you know, I mean, you did everything possible and sometimes it works out, sometimes not. And, um, and we had a great chat, we were riding for two hours and I think that, that helped him quite a lot, you know, because if he would be there on his own, I think maybe things would look different now because he was really completely sad in a different world, you know, and I just tried to motivate him and say, Junge, we go again in two weeks time, there's another World Cup and or two more World Cups and uh, you just just relief just you know there's no pressure now just you know i mean you had a decent training block everything you know you're ready to go if it doesn't work out this week uh, it's going to work out in two weeks you got, i'm going to be 100 percent sure two weeks later he had his best ever world cup result because <laughs> this was kind of in in the end i don't know exactly what happened but he completely swapped switched everything and then suddenly he came up he showed up i think he was top 10 or something in the world cup suddenly like this boof and he, he came back into the finish line after the World Cup race and he said, can't be, that was so easy. I said, Junge, <laughs> we go, I told you, you know. And uh, I remember from that moment on, I mean, he was unstoppable. And, this, and then he had progressions, he developed in the, in, the, in the right way. And I mean, now, if I look at him now, I mean, he's marathon world champion. <laughs> he's one of the best uh, mountain bikers on earth. He's second uh, in, the, in the world ranking. He's one of the best mountain bikers and it's crazy to see his progress, you know, over those uh, last years. A gente não estava num dia legal, o Mano largou com muita dor, com o joelho bastante inchado e a gente conseguiu sair de, em torno da 15ª colocação, bem sobrados e terminamos a alguns segundos do pós na etapa, no dia. A gente não conseguiu tirar tempo da Scott, mas a gente conseguiu tirar muito tempo deles ao longo da etapa. Então a gente perdeu basicamente a etapa, o dia ou a possibilidade de tirar tempo na primeira subida. Então acho que é, foi um dia que a gente cruzou na quarta colocação, mas apesar disso foi bom pra gente rever o quão bem nós trabalhamos juntos e o quão bem a gente consegue reverter a situação mesmo quando as coisas não, não estão indo bem. Reverter isso foi uma, uma boa lição pra gente, então foi um dia que é, de muita satisfação pessoal, talvez não profissional, porque a gente ficou aquém do nosso resultado, mas pessoalmente, para mim e para o Manuel, foi um dia de bastante crescimento e de autoconhecimento. Second position, the team of Cannondale Factory Racing, ever popular with the fans. Germany's Manuel Fimic and Brazil's Enrique Avancini. Nós 
durante muito tempo eu fui o cara só, só absorvendo coisa deles, dele. Durante muito tempo eu não tinha muito a oferecer ao humano em termos de conhecimento, de crescimento para ele. Eu acho que a coisa que eu mais contribuí para ele foi em relação à minha vontade de, de querer melhorar. É, acho que isso ele começou a ver de uma forma assim muito muito nítida. O quanto que eu queria melhorar e qual a mensagem que eu quero que eu quero compartilhar. Ave, in general, you know, he's so dedicated to the sport and so passionate about it and he's so critical with himself as well, you know. He wants to improve so bad and he this he puts everything possible Uh, on the table to improve, you know, and to be the best, uh, and to be the best mountain biker in the world. And I try to, in a way, try to help him on his way. I mean, I just play a little role in, in this, but on the other side, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away how he developed over those uh, years, and uh, I'm just thankful that, and or proud as well, you know, to be that, to be a little part on the side. And uh, it's just nice at the moment. And now we are already like four or five years together in the team. We are more than just teammates. We became friends, you know, we have so many things in coming. He, uh, he just got his baby now, you know. He asks me sometimes for advice in terms of family stuff, which I don't think is the best, you know. <laughs> But anyway, I try, you know, also try to help him on this side. But I don't think he's listening. Uh, but I mean, no, we have so many things in common, and it's just uh, so nice to spend time with uh, with this guy. Uh, we have so many good laughs, so many good chats, and um, it's just great to be on his side.